Okay, so, gotta make this fast. I think it's today, might be tomorrow, who knows. But, uh, I'm gonna go into what I might have to do today, or what I'll, what I'm going to be doing today. Because I have to make this video quick. <clears throat> I believe I left off right before the entrance exam, when Deku gets one for all. I think I gave Deku around a month or half a month to start learning how to use one for all. Deku in this has his own way of using one for all because he does not know full calling yet. The first time he uses one for all, he throws a punch and it hurts a lot because it breaks his arm like he does the first time. What Deku does is he turns his arm into smoke, somewhat like his normal attack, I forgot what I called it, but he turns his arm into smoke, like, around his elbow, and launches his fist at the person. But he does this with one for all, in not, uh, basically from his hand down to his elbow. One for all is in there, and when he throws that hit, it is basically the same amount of force. But that hit... That hand eventually does turn into smoke, and once it uses one for all, his hand does turn into smoke, and it reforms, giving Deku little to no damage. But Deku can't spam these attacks because of one reason. They're only ranged. He can't do them close range because the way it works is it won't just be a smash. It's going to be somewhat of an explosion outward. So everyone around Deku will most likely get hit with his attack. I forgot what- I think I made it to where Deku is almost two times as strong as he is. So if he can use 5% and I think it was season 2, might be season 3, but I think it was season 2, when he learns Volcaling, he can use, I'm gonna say to like 8% in this, which is already pretty overpowered. And because of one for all boosting his quirk, his uh, his Nimbus is actually a bit quicker than well what it was. At this point, when Deku uh, uses the Nimbus, he shoots off part of the uh, smoke to give it a bit of boost. But he can use one for all with it, and it gives it a very fast boost. The only hard thing is Deku needs to learn how to be able to stand or even just ride on it normally without falling. So, Deku goes and we skip to the entrance exam. Now, I might be a bit sick, so if you keep hearing me, you know, uh, having trouble breathing or, you know, you hear that weird, you get what they call it, you know, when you breathe through your nose and the snot's there, so yeah. You hear that? I'm sorry. I don't think I'm sick, it might just be like allergies, because it only happened today, about a couple minutes ago it started happening. But anyway, so the when it gets to the entrance exam, the theory exam, Deku does pretty well on the theory exam. At least he gets to about, let's say, he's at least top 20. Now we skip to the... Well, robot, the uh, villain portion of the exam. So, in this, Deku goes and he continues to, well, try to get as many points as possible. He doesn't meet Oraka like he does in canon. He meets her by saving her. So, the way Deku gets around to get points is instead of running, he makes his Nimbus and he flies around. And... What he does is he uses his smoke to basically fill as much smoke in the robot as possible to try and make them pop off, but it doesn't really work because of how many areas there are in the robot for the smoke to escape in the robot. So what Deku does is he quickly let's how do I put this? He condenses his smoke as much as possible into somewhat of a wall in a sense. You can break through it pretty easily, but what Deku does is 
this wall, the robots can't really see past it because of how high it is. Deku uses his wall to hide where he is, and he quickly opens up a hole and sends that attack through that I said earlier. He would call this... Uh... I don't know what it, what do you think guys what do you think this attack would be called you know the one where he shoots off his hand and has one fall and it basically explodes outward and like a similar to how the Ross and shuriken is but nowhere near the damage it only pushes people back so let's say he uses about five percent of a smash so yeah let's say like a five percent smash He's able to get this down, and he's able to take down quite a couple robots with just one attack. So he's able to get robot after robot after robot. This gets Deku at least 50 points. The main reason being is Deku still doesn't have a lot of control over his quirk. And with one for all, he's still limited even more, but he does, he did get a new move to take out a lot of enemies in one attack. So, when the Zero Pointer comes, Oraka still gets stuck under the rubble, and Deku sees this. I think what Deku would do, this attack would be called... Uh, hmm, what should it be called? This is a different attack. This attack would be called... Thunderstorm. It's only called this... Because the clouds, or the clouds of the smoke that Deku's making, instead of being its normal white color, becomes a very dark gray, somewhat like the clouds you see in a thunderstorm. And it gets like this after Deku compresses it very, very much, and he throws this, well, his normal attack. He throws a punch filled with one for all. He calls this thunderstorm. But the moment it gets far enough, it starts to disperse, but when it starts dispersing, the other smoke that's coming off of it starts turning into smaller and smaller hands that don't really have one for all. So it gets hit a lot, and I mean a lot, until the big hand that's left, it's about the size of Deku's body, if not a bit bigger. And it hits the robot and he pushes it back quite a bit I'm gonna say it actually does do what it does in canon but it just took a while like the robot is right on top of Deku and Uraka it is about to crush them when this attack hit because of how slow it moves and how it gets slower and slower the longer the distance is so Deku is basically like this thing's gonna crush us. Things like the robot's gonna crush us. So he quickly makes a Nimbus and sends, basically puts a rock on it and sends it off. While it, because you know it's not two of them, it's actually able to. And Oraka is gonna be lighter than Deku, so it's actually able to get Oraka out from the robot, and it actually crushes Deku. The zero pointer falls over and crushes Deku. Now everyone's like that. The person's dead, you know. Recover girl comes out, everyone comes out. But Deku, like, they they start having heroes like, oh, we have to find him just in case he's alive. But they don't find anything. They don't find blood or a piece of hair. They don't find anything of Deku's. Eventually, they see this small amount of smoke going around the floor. Something even like fog going over the floor and forming where the Nimbus is. So... They see this, and it starts forming into what looks like a person. And Deku forms. Deku turns back into his well, physical form, basically. What Deku did was turn his entire body into smoke to basically not die. So, yeah. Now, everyone's like, what the hell? They all, they all thought... When he threw those punches, he can only generate smoke and basically throw the punch. But it's more like he can 
turn his body into smoke. And they're kind of thinking, he just survived that robot that's probably a couple tons just crushed him. They're thinking, he survived that, how? Recovery Girl comes over to him to see if he's okay. Deku has little to no damage, and he'd still get 60 rescue points like he did in canon. So, Deku would get 60 rescue points along with his 50 villain points. At least I said it was 50. So, since he got that, uh, since he got that, he'd have 110, I'm pretty sure, total points. Anyway, guys, I will leave this video off here and i will see you in the next one if you want to see another part of this that isn't rushed uh, uh leave at least 10 likes on the video for a new, another part and if you want to see more content uh go ahead and subscribe you don't have to but i would greatly appreciate it anyway guys i'll see you in the next video goodbye and have a wonderful time